Now you might be wondering about this overcut. Let's flip it over. Where's the overcut? I just did that like an idiot. On the bright side, this thing is very heavy. <laughs> I'm not there to make Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. <laughs> this video, we're just gonna keep rolling on, literally. That was uh, an unintentional pun, Michael Scott style pun. That is the skate plate. We're gonna keep rolling on anyway. I interrupted myself, as I want to do. Why would I do that? Let's just start this over again. And scene. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This video is going to cover some actual roof framing, roof framing, that doesn't involve trusses. That's right. It's going to be ep of epic proportions. Just wait. So what I'm doing right here is I'm using the skate plate on the DeWalt saw. I am not a fan of the DeWalt saw. The, the balance is a little wonky. Way back when we first got it, it just tends to push squirrely. Also, we can't really cut straight anymore because we use these guides. That is the skate plate. There'll be a link in the description below. I'll probably link to it here because it's kind of an affiliate style thing. Let's just keep rolling. Block line is just, okay. I just wanted to see, make sure I've got a rhythm for it. The rhythm is gonna get you tonight. On the bright side. Name that singer in the description heavy. below, <laughs> comments below. Okay, I can go under this if it helps you and we can shoot past. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, just to catch you up a little bit, but I'm gonna follow this up in a future video. Had a fantastic conversation with the engineer, uh, like two hours long, just talking shop. So, I have a two by eight ledger that that's going to catch up? the ceiling joist here on the porch framing. And that is a two by 12 ledger for Over the rafters. Here. And we went ahead and beveled it at a 412. It's about a four, 18 and a half degree angle, 18.43 if we're gonna be pedantic. And then I'm shooting with the Passload XP, three okay. inch by 0 0.131 inch nails. And of course, aiming directly for the studs. I remember uh, sheathing. reading this book and it was describing how seals are trained maximum violence. And what the theory was, is that if you don't go like full tilt, that things tend to escalate. So the goal is to shut down whatever it is as fast as possible. And so basically overwhelming force. And so I always think of that when I drive a board that's all cupped and curled. 118.10. 118.10, you wanna go down and cut it? And I've got the saw still set up for the rip. And then we could probably grab the T-square for layout, lay out the whole thing. But anyway, I always think about that as like, when I go to drive this thing flat, it is maximum. I'm not there to make friends with it. <laughs> and you are probably like Kyle, you'd rather just work. You don't wanna hear my stories. So, so let's just work. <laughs> you notice here on the left, we're just a little below the line. Now we snapped it through, it. we had a little gauge block. The, the more important thing is, is to match the trusses on either side, we're gonna plane that out. And then here is a pro tip for you. Always measure the snap line off of the windows to make sure something isn't wonky. Because if it is wonky, you need to make it look not wonky when it comes time to setting the windows. And uh, I could tell you some stories, but then you would think less of me. Again, that's the Passload Nailer. It's the newer version, so it bounce fires. It's a lot lighter than the Makita, DeWalt, and Metabo, and the Milwaukee. Uh, they're all about all right. five pounds heavier than this. Maybe now with the bounce break. fire, there's little extra components. It could be like You're make me crawl four and a half pounds. That is a non-starter for me. Oh, Too oh. heavy. Just right at the right height. It's the gut that's killing me, man. Ready? I hope it fits. All right, I will tack this side. And then you tell me. Should I nail here? You got it, or you want me to help you? Oh, dude. Right there? Yep. I'm impressed. 
start where I really like it again. Oh, out of nails. I got, I got a load of nails. Hey, come on. Something to point out here is that we did not tape this house because I was unsure. I think I mentioned this in a previous video. I was unsure what the inspector would say. Turns out when he came out, it was our old insulating estimator and he was like, you would have been fine. So you can see that we taped just enough to be able to get the ledgers on. Remember that zip system, it's not just our WRB attached to a wood structural panel, but that's also our primary air all barrier. Right, right, so that's right. why you want to tape behind the all framing right, all right, all right. in cases like this. What's that guy doing? I, I am so nostalgic for all that music. Lay out from the cable. Come on, big T. Okay, 95 and a quarter, because that's what we're going. Rafter long. So we'll go right up against that guy. Is it me you're looking for? Shoot it, do, 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 do. Okay, I'm still going three quarters back. I'm going to need sunglasses, I think. Okay, I will go Uno Moss and I'll get all those with the T square. Oh, uh, let's do against all odds. Okay, I'm gonna start from the bottom because of the bubble, and we're gonna go ceiling joist to the short. Rafters to the long. So take a look at me now. Oh, just something. Kind of rusty. So take a look at me now. All right, I could give you numbers if you want to start cutting the ceiling joysties. You're the only one who really knew me at all. Um, let's go 69 and a half. I can run down to the other side. I think that's going to be pretty good, Kyle. Yeah, let's go 69 and a half. And uh, I'll count up how many we need once I get it laid out. You're the only one who really knew me at all. I think this is the greatest song ever written. So take a look at me now. It's kind of muggy out here. Would you be so oh, kind okay. as to comment below in the comment section? Do you prefer I not speed up certain things? Two I've foot. had I've had comments Rafter both ways. The, the fact is for YouTube is the recommendation Four is foot. that you Rafter people wrong. have such short attention spans <laughs> to keep things moving, but. I My channel is mostly focused on education, right? And so we kind of have to slow it down a little bit. And so instead of like going at 2x speed or 4x speed, just let me know what you prefer Let's down take below. A look at Incidentally, me now. right here is where all these years later, I still make mistakes. And when we're pulling from the here. outside to an edge, okay, we go half the member back. So for two by, it's three quarters long. back. Once you have like your first mark or your 10th mark, you can then hook off of that and just mark your on center spacing. In this case, two foot on center, which by the way, has been a staple in the Pacific Northwest for 40 to 50 years. So those of you on the East Coast that do 16 on center, way to waste lumber. It's unnecessary. Unless, of course, it is necessary, which it's not here. So. Anyway. All right, so I might be able to avoid that. Not really. We'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I think 16 is the right number. All right, I have a scrap piece of 2 by 12. Let me show you how to cut a rafter prefer using 12 inch squares because they're basically indestructible. So I need a ridge or plumb cut at the top. 
this is where the rafter meets the ridge. I'm gonna go with a 612, so I pivot on that point and I use the common scale, so six. Okay, so my rafter length would be hooking the long point of that angle, and let's just pick something arbitrary. Let's pick four foot as the rafter length. Pivot point on that mark, and I'm gonna go 612 here. That is a plumb cut. It's called plumb because when it's in place, it's going to be vertical. Now I want a seat or level cut that is three and a half inches. So I just take the three and a half on my square and I hold this nice and tight. See how that pivots? I'm just gonna slide it downhill until I have three and a half coming right through that slot. Go back just a hair and I mark that. Two by six tail. Then I'm gonna find the two by six here and I'm just gonna scribe. And there's my rafter. And the reason I do it this way is I have fewer pieces of scrap to handle. There we go. 16 inch overhangs. And that was the outside of our fascia. I would mark the back side of the fascia. And we're gonna go with a 612 again. I'm just gonna bring it, slide it to six there. Now you might be wondering about this overcut. Let's flip it over. Where's the overcut? So what we're looking at is because the blade is round, it goes from no overcut to slightly overcut. And almost always, that is not going to weaken the tail. It would take an extreme load. So now, if the rafter was in place, the rafter would be like this. There's almost no load on the planet besides maybe a tank that could sit on the end of that and break that tail. Um, here's, here's what we could do, if this helps. So we need, I think, 16 total. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. If we flipped over, let's say 14, this guy's kind of ugly. So let's just set it there for now. This would be 15 and then 16, is then everything else could stack on the back. You know, just make it nice and tall. You want to just like pull a couple off to start out with. That's pretty good. And I'll just go right to the end. Yeah, and I can go your way. And then this guy, while we're here, we might as well just do it. If you want to leave it on top. I know it's just a little cramped, but at least they're super lightweight. And then this guy, we could flip over. And then make sure I can see that. And then you wanna just put this on the ground. Okay. I can start up here if you start there so I'm not in your way. This, of course, is a case of where I sped it up at 2x. Do you really want to watch all of the footage at regular speed? I, I think we can make the point. So just a couple things to point out here. Kyle's got the plumb cut on his side. We've got the pattern rafter laying in the dirt, which we test fit. Why not? When I was younger, I would just go for it, and it usually worked well. <laughs> I've got the bird's mouth and tail, and you'll notice that I have the base plate loose. The reason for that is I just find that it keeps the saw more stable and I can come into the level cut of the bird's mouth in that case there. It, 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 it's not like it's this great groundbreaking or earth shattering technique. Try it, let me know what you think in the comments. The saws that do this the best were the Metabo HPT and the older blue Milwaukee, uh, Makita. I always say that. All right, I'm gonna do this a little less like an idiot. So here's just a little bit better look. The Makita saws have the smoothest depth. This, the base plate just, if you remember the old skills, almost from out of the box, it took a hammer to get those things to adjust for depth. But the Makita does a fantastic job. The HPT did pretty well too. Okay. 
Want me to crown her? They're pretty straight, which is kind of nice. We'll flip it. Let's flip that guy. And then this guy is pretty ugly. I say we just, now that we buried it, we'll just chuck it. <clears throat> so everything's crowned that way, including that guy. You might be thinking to yourself, does it really take two really good looking framers to cut these rafters? And the answer is no. A lot of times though, we just prefer to work together for this kind of thing. One, it's good training, you get into a rhythm. When they're longer rafters, you're gonna cut with two people anyway. I could have cut these by myself back in the day, I certainly would have. But in this case, it just made sense for us to work together, especially because that pile was a little haphazard and where are we gonna set the rafters as we cut them? Nah, and no so good. all of this, this is just easier here. with two people. I'll whack the end. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine with the pattern. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we'll be the two short. I'm okay. Man, they're just pretty stinking straight. Okay. So everything's ground that way. Somebody was asking me why I do the chopping motion. I couldn't really remember why until we cut those rafters with the hem fur and the grain just bound up so much. Because it's easier to go straight that way. I feel like it is. Yeah, I do. You can line up your tick mark at the end and you can almost be like halfway through your cut before you have yeah. to it. Without, yeah. Okay, so I kind of feel like we have to because we're gonna need two more. You wanna take two off, we'll just start a new stack. And we'll just try to figure out. It's always a guess to see if I can get it to. Uh... Okay, that one is kind of ugly. So, let's go with that. And that's pretty good. So what I'm thinking is, 
Let me just shove this back down. I think I'll probably shoot a video at the very end uh, just to show how to lay one out. I'm just gonna get these out of our way. Yeah, I just, um, I think I just either, it was kind of a repetitive stress injury or whatever, but I'm trying to stay off of my cab this week. Cause man, this summer we've only gone for two hikes. Like the last hike we went was a month ago. Yeah. I think my biggest pet peeve with people on social, and I just wonder how much was I like this when I was younger? Don't you wonder what I was gonna say? <laughs> I turned off both cameras. I have no idea. But I can guarantee you this. I was just as annoying as a troll when I was younger. All right. is technically this guy is right on the edge, but I counted 16, so I think I'm gonna slam one against the edge as far as the rafter. So I'll take one rafter. That's where I probably listen out. Either way, they're nice and light. All right, so I'll do the rafter and then I'll, I'll go rafter and then ceiling joist. I'll just kind of alternate. Yeah, that's perfect. Let me do this, go right-handed. Come on. Okay, so I am right-handed or correct-handed as opposed to wrong-handed. Both my parents are left-handed, my siblings are right-handed. That's not, that's not the point of this. <laughs> Since I'm right-handed, I swing with my right hand. I use the saw with my right hand. But when I was younger, I forced myself to use the nail gun left-handed until now I prefer it left-handed. And that's so that I didn't hang it off my tool bags and get in the way of my hammer. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta just go right-handed. Here's just a tip. I'm working left to right because all of my marks on the rafter around. are to Actually, the right of the this. board and I can see it. So you see that I kind of have to duck yeah. in there and see it left-handed. I could mark both yeah. sides, whatever you want to do. It's just that try to be in the same motion as much I'm as possible. Doing, I'm so used to so doing everything see that with I got my a little left hand when it comes to the nail gun. the nailer, well, right there. <laughs> because the nailer needs to be on my right, so, so I just need to reverse the hook and then it will there be set go. up. So we have enough tools we that some it. of the guys, they just don't want to use the nailer left-handed. That's okay. So the hook is set up so that they can hang it on their right. 
for mine, nice. it's on the left so that I can use my left hand and then grab my hammer without there being any kind of a interference, as they say. Very nice. Typical. And I know it's gonna come up. Why are two people working on this? This is all part of teaching and training. Obviously, Kyle could have framed this by himself or I could have framed it by myself. Sometimes we just don't want to. We want to work together. We enjoy each other's company. Yeah. I now, love as we work our way thing, across, yeah. you will notice that over there toward the right where the tamper is in the camera, you'll see it on like the very last four, maybe five rafters and ceiling joists. Something is just a little wonky and the plumb cut's not perfect. I don't care. I couldn't care less because we got to attach a bunch yeah. of hardware anyway. Even if we didn't, I wouldn't care. That's just me being honest. It's just the nature of framing. Sometimes things Whatever. get a little wonky. The, the plumb cuts were on the money, cut correctly. The math was all correct. It's just sometimes like there's a cup in the two by 12 or something in the Drives wall. Me nuts. It's framing. No one's made it real good, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna get this beat over. Another aside, when go. I posted parts of this as a reel or YouTube short, whatever, I think it was here on YouTube, people were very critical that I was only nailing the same side of the rafter and the ceiling joist, namely the right-hand side as you're facing it. Is that really a big deal? No, you gotta follow the details. I didn't bother because I know I've gotta add hardware. And the roof sheathing is going to nail to that rafter and to that beveled 2x12. This thing isn't going to twist off. So anyway, all rules are made to be broken. You just have to have a very good reason for breaking them. That has never gotten me out of a speed tick speeding ticket, by the way. All right, let me move this drone controller. You know what I might do real quick, Kyle? I'm gonna pull a layout and get that center one locked in. Wonder if I just, I bet this won't go far enough. Well, it will. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That's like right on the money. <laughs> okay. I mean, you saw it. I, I knocked it onto yeah, layout I mean, I just with my eye. I didn't have layout on the beam, so. Uh, of course, there's nothing to nail it to. Nope. Yeah, I gotta say, man, is that right?
Okay, let me hop to this side. It's like nothing to nail to on that guy. I don't understand why this guy. I've never kind of adjusted this thing. There we go. I think I do have some B-roll that I'll overlay here. Uh, besides the hardware that attaches the rafter to the ledger and the ceiling joist to the ledger, we also have strong tie RBC roof boundary clips that nail basically. Okay. Try to explain this. It's a clip that attaches the bird block to the beam. And that's so that when we nail the roof sheathing to the bird block, that roof diaphragm gets transferred down to the structure that's below. And so that's why like the column caps have to get engineered the way that they are. If it was a wall, the lateral force or shear forces, if it was a header, it, we might have to put straps to the trimmers. So you're thinking like the, the roof load, how does that transfer to the walls and ultimately down to the foundation into the soil? So there's the extent of my engineering knowledge. So thank you. I'll be taking my test on Monday. Okay, I don't have to finish this. I can, it's totally up to you. Would you rather be up here? That don't matter to me. Are you sure? Donkey. Donkey is my middle name. It doesn't, yeah, no, it doesn't bother me. I won't do it. Here's a little known fact about me. Donkey is my middle nickname. I've also been known as a jackass. <laughs> uh, Jason used to call me the world's best pack ass. You see, uh, you see a theme there, and my brother just always is like, Shrek! Shrek! Donkey! It's really bad, really bad uh, impression there, but yeah, I was born to be a mule. Apparently, I am built just like my Grandpa Joe, a farmer, who also was just a mule. Embrace it. That's what I say. Come Embrace on, it. All right, let me move some of this crap. Here is an epiphany that I just had watching this. Sometimes, like that porch rafter, structurally could most likely be a two by six, especially here we have no snow load. And when we're in, as the crow flies, we're like a quarter of a mile from the water, from salt water in Puget Sound. So why do we need two by eight? Yeah, that well, is a toenailing machine. I don't know, but here's, here, here's a hypothesis. It might be to make the connection easier, like for example, to get a seat cut or level cut at the bird's mouth with a better connection yeah. to the beam. And it just it could be like in the case of this two by twelve, it bites we get really more well. nails of the two by twelve into that wall, that shear wall. And so the more the 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 I can't my words escape me. But basically the, the deeper the material, the, the more room we have for nails without splitting things out. And then same thing for the connection. So anyway, it was just a thought that it's not really because that the member isn't strong enough, but maybe the connections need reinforcement. Hopefully that makes some sense. If you're an engineer, can you please comment below and just tell me that I was right, but, but clean it up and make me sound somewhat articulate, and then I'll pin your comment. It's an incentive for both of us. All right, let me reload. Allow me to get on my soapbox for just a moment. I promise it's not politics. It's hearing protection. You notice I'm wearing earbuds. Those are the Isotunes Free 2.0, and there's a link in the description below. They do have a noise reduction rating in addition to being connected to my phone over, over Bluetooth so I can listen to music. I'm protecting my hearing. Protect your hearing. 
And while I'm on the subject, protect your eyes. So I'm going to put links in the description Possibly. below. I, I have see. a relationship with Isotunes. Take that for what it is, but you might as well save some coin. That, and high specs, fantastic safety glasses. To. And Peter, who runs that company, it's his company he started. Fantastic guy out of Canada. So anyway, keep yourself protected. She wing joist. And then I'll check layout. I feel like this gap is just a little smaller. So if I go from the truss, then no, we don't need it. That doubler kind of takes care of it. Okay. All right, everybody, thanks for following along in this video. So there's a look at the porch. One of the things you might have noticed is that we left the ceiling joist unnailed to the rafters at the beam. It makes it a little bit easier to pull out as you go and put bird blocks in. In the next video, we're going to keep going with some roof framing. This roof slope, we had to figure out on site to match the truss. There were just some discrepancies with the plans. This kind of thing happens. More specifically, there were some pretty big discrepancies with the girder truss. It just was not that straight because when you have a four ply girder, it's hard to suck the thing tight when you have gang plates on everything. And so we kind of expected that. And so we, what we did is we installed that two by 12 ledger and we're going to get into this. In fact, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. Thank you very much for following along. Hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell thing down below. And as always, just thank you very much for following along and watching. I really, I really do appreciate it. If you have suggestions as far as editing, do you prefer it sped up, slowed down? Are there topics I'm not covering because I just kind of start to ramble on? Put that stuff down below. Constructive criticism is fantastic. Sarcastic trolling, you just need to get a life and move out of your mom's basement. Boom, mic drop. Can't drop the mic, so see you in the next video.